You've got me for years, I've got you back. This is by far the most embarrassing moment of my career. Harry's marriage proposal is just a week away. He's keen to look his best, but Kerbox has other plans. He loves his physique, loves his appearance, and we've sneakily got him to the salon here to have some fun with him. Hoppo and Kerbox have convinced Harry's to top up his tan before the proposal. We're going to get him in the booth, we're going to strip him, we're going to spray him. But they omitted one important fact. Unfortunately, it's going to be the wrong colour. We're going to nail him. <laughs> He's been a little pale the summer, hasn't been that good, so I thought <laughs> yeah. I'll shout him up here. I'll just get you to put on this G-string. Oh. <laughs> uh, Hoppo, what have you got me into here? <laughs> That's a breathing apparatus. <laughs> That's for SARS. I <laughs> can't put that over me. <laughs> oh, you're a lyric. That looks good. You yeah, can't be serious. Yes. Look <laughs> Mate, you need a lot of work. <laughs> With blacked out goggles and close to nude, Harry's couldn't be more vulnerable. I nearly peed my pants because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> yeah, I oh, it worked out really. <laughs> Harry's retreats to the showers. Why are you doing? Only to find more hecklers. What do you need spray yeah. here for? You oh, work on a beach. <laughs> Can you? Get, get your ring out. <laughs> but, okay, seriously, I have Come to go. On. Get your Just give us a quick look. I've got to go. Where are you going, oh, mate? Oh, Smurf. You never see him angry, but he's quite clearly angry, isn't he? No, he's fuming. Yeah. <laughs> he's blue. He looks like a Smurf. No, I just tell us quickly what happened. Oi, I still look that much better than you. <laughs> <laughs> you look awful. Swimmers, everybody out of the water. Swimming in front of a dangerous current sign. Do not swim here. Do not swim here. A surfer keeps the woman afloat until Harrison can get her on the board. You're right, you're right. You're going to jump on. You're going to face up, I'll face the sun. Face the sun. You're going to lie down. You're going to lie down. You're good. I was gobsmacked. It definitely wasn't the appropriate beachwear to be swimming. It was like some resort where you'd see someone wearing it at a five-star hotel, but you wouldn't wear that swimming down here. You're good. Sarai is from Washington, D.C. Come on. The sound bank. That was the most challenging rescue I reckon I've done for a while. It's fully clothed, made it that awkward. You're all right. Just make sure you go right up when the flag's next time, okay? Um, I was like semi drowning. <laughs> I went like the waves were high and I went in. I couldn't swim as much as I thought I could back in. And then, yeah, he ended up trying to get me. But I'm a big girl, so it was a little struggle, too. And, yeah. You never know what the, the backgrounds of people are until you actually rescue them and meet them on the beach. Uh, I had no idea, but she was, a, she was a lifeguard. I've been a lifeguard for, like, seven years back home, and I've never experienced that before. What if I didn't know how to, like, assist him? Sarai doesn't intend to take Harrison's job anytime soon. Like, I used to teach swim lessons, and I worked at an actual pool, but I've never been to a beach, so it's completely different. It's more work. Like, usually I thought he could just help me and, like, we just glide through, but 
no, like those waves were coming in strong and like we had to like force ourselves to go in. Like I had no idea it was different. Next time Sarai comes down for a swim down at Bondi, go between the flags and maybe find some more appropriate swimming attire. <laughs> I've got a very good driving record. Like I'm pretty handy with the reverse, um, with the trailer. Normally, if you'd be reversing like a trailer or a caravan, you're going to have your mirrors, your middle and your two sides. This one, you've got a rubber neck, and it can go wrong quite quick. Despite an impeccable driving record, Vagus has run his buggy aground. There wasn't a ramp, basically. It was nothing I could do. It was clearly Mother Nature's fault for digging out all the sand. So jammed. I jammed it. Jammed it hard. Whether he wants it or not, Bagus is about to get a whole heap of advice. One way, central to north tower. Go ahead. Can we just get one of you guys just to walk up here? Um, just just a moment. We just got a problem with the mic. Yeah, copy. What, what's happened? What? Nothing's happened. When I arrived, Bagus was still quite confident, but that confidence quickly diminished. Ready? Ah. The wheels were fully covered. It was the deepest bog I've seen. So I sort of came down with a fresh set of eyes. But surely if we could get towed out, we can build the sand back up. Start yeah. again. The young recruit's advice is falling on deaf ears. Can you get that sandbag? Is that loose? Yeah, because then you can put it under the wheel. Yeah, that's it. That should work. I thought the logical solution would just be to tow it out with the other buggy. We have two buggies, one's bogged, one's not. Well, the other buggy would just be able to tow us out, won't it? But yeah, I got shut down pretty quick and the boys seemed to think that they had better ideas. All right, let's try the diff lock. I'm going to go forward. Yeah, sweet. OK, look out. Here we go. Ready, set, go. No, no, you need to get towed. Knock-off time is just minutes away. We couldn't get it out, and we tried and tried, and then more people come up, and let's try this and that. Yeah, damaged tubes, snap ramps, snap 4B2s. It wasn't budging. What about we just try to tow it with the other one? Finally, Fatty takes matters into his own hands. I'm going to go get the other buggy and tow this out. Oh, Did anyone got a rope? <laughs> Grab the buggy, pull it around, tie it to the bogs buggy, hit the gas. Slow, slow, slow. Go, go. Perfect, I was stoked. My solution was the, the winner. Put that one into park, can you, please? So it doesn't roll back. After finally solving the problem, surely Fatty is due some recognition. Fatty thinks he, he knew, but he's a he's a young pup. Like, he don't, I don't even know if he can reverse the trailer in. Oh, I think Baggis might take claim because he's a little, bit, a little bit embarrassed that he bogged it in the first place. Down and... <laughs> I'd like to thank the team. Great work. I'd like to also blame Mother Nature for digging out that um, drop-off. Clearly it had nothing to do with me. <laughs> 30 minutes after his first attempt, Vagus is finally getting the job done. No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, Vagus! <laughs> it was a good feeling. It was nice to just squeeze in before wow. knock-off and... Um, Sandy and sweaty, good shower and a cold beer. It's sort of everything can be relaxed again. Yeah, and it was it was wasn't my fault. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh no worries. We'll just send someone to have a look. Yeah. No worries. An older man is lying on the beach, motionless. Was it someone past here? They're going for the shorts, like. Straight through there, like he's in a weird sort of like a fetal position. <laughs> Years earlier, a similar situation faced by lifeguards 
ended in tragedy. I want to just walk down there, mate. You said he's been like that for a while. It's like one year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I know the story. Yeah. yeah, as I'm approaching this guy, unfortunately, the thought that first came into my head was um, a story I've heard down here of one of the lifeguards about 10 years ago approaching a guy on the beach in a similar situation and he was dead. And you don't want to think the worst, but it kind of just naturally happens. It's like an older boy. He's in an awkward position, I think. So he's bitched his head. He was having the best nap ever. I can't believe he cooled his nap. Yeah, I couldn't win. The worst result was he was dead and had to deal with that terrible situation. The better result, which is still not a good result, is I wake up a guy having to sleep on the beach. So yeah, I was in a bit of a pickle, really. <laughs> Buddy, why'd you wake him up from his nap? Yeah, he was filthy. His, his words were quite nice, but the look he gave me was just daggers. He really wasn't impressed. <laughs> he was just in the middle of just a perfect afternoon nap and fatty woke him. Yeah, we got some funny jobs down here and some stuff that definitely falls out of the lifeguarding realm. He's bumming. He's just in a bag, <laughs> mate. He was, he was on his lunch break. <laughs> He's like, oh, my lunch break. We've still got 20 minutes left. I was like, I'm so sorry to wake you up. Just days before Christmas, and Maxie has a surprise for his 19-year-old cousin, Ryan. All the trainees get pranked um, some way or the other. You know, I think Ryan this year has is, is definitely been a, a highlight. Maxie's told new trainee Ryan the two of them are going to feature in a lifeguard calendar. A friend of Maxie's is pretending to be the photographer. Yeah, trying to hand him up a bit. Silly. Get him out of his comfort zone. Yeah, for sure. He's a pretty quiet guy, so it'll be a bit of fun. Just as this is no ordinary photographer, these won't be ordinary photos. Put your hand up. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, put your hands over your head like you're sort of, like, as if you had your shirt off. OK, big smile now. OK, that's good. Ryan's goal is to impress his colleagues, especially his cousin, Maxie. Swim, swim, head up, head up. No, no. Are you serious? Breaststroke. Of course, what's a prank without throwing in a bit of public humiliation? <laughs> We're going to use some props, just holding up in front of your face, and then going peekaboo. I actually thought Ryan was a bit sharper than that. I thought he would have seen it coming, but he just hook, line and sinker. Just, just got him and reeled him in. Uh, it was brutal. When you're ready. Peekaboo! <laughs> Peekaboo! <laughs> At the end of the day, there's not much he can really do. He's just been got up well. After an hour of posing, peekabooing, and generally entertaining the onlookers, Ryan? is told the embarrassing truth. How would you feel if I told you that I'm not a photographer? It's all a gag. Anyway, <laughs> 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 you've been done. <laughs> all right, <laughs> OK. No, it's good to be You're a bit embarrassed? Oh, yeah, well, I, I think was... he loved it. <laughs> he was loving was, it. Yeah, I yeah, the, was... gags, the gags, I'm not getting the gags, gags on you guys, <laughs> mate. He was loved it. I had my suspicions a little bit at the start, and then, you know, I just, just I thought, you know what, let's just go with it. Let's have some fun. Ryan's not off the hook just yet. In a few days' time, the new lifeguard calendar will be revealed to all and sundry. <laughs> On Boxing Day, as the Sydney to Hobart yacht race gets underway, Maxi has a gift for his cousin. I don't think Ryan knew that I was going to come through and, and make the calendar. I think how I see it, you know, because we are family, you know, in, in 20 years' time, pull them out in a family barbecue, oh, have little kids running around. <laughs> Remember that time back in 2015? <laughs> and we pull out the calendars and we yeah, reminisce. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Oh, mate. So, Ryan, you didn't think I would come through with the goods? No, I, did, I didn't. I thought that just that'd be it, but it looks like you've got me a present here. So, you ready to have a look at it? Yeah, 100%. Let's All do right. it. When they bought the calendar down for Ryan, it sort of it was sort of like the prank continued. And then actually watching him open the calendar, we were just in hysterics on the floor. It was hilarious. <laughs> Why? That's actually nice, I think. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite picture was uh, Mr. March, Ryan doing the assistance required. 
Once I saw the calendar, there's actually a couple of really nice shots in there of me and Maxie, mum and dad. I definitely would love to put them up in the house, I'd say. And then there's a couple of other ones that are just, yeah, really funny if you're not me. Oh, here we go. This is what everyone loved most. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. <laughs> oh, you can almost <laughs> see the, the end of the peekaboo on his lips. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to start calling him Boo. Boo Boo. Hello, Boo Boo. Peekaboo. 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 That's it. I'm done. That's it. Game over. <laughs> that poor kid. That poor kid. It was late afternoon. It was a pretty busy day. I locked up the tower. I went, you know what, I'll, I'll go in there, I'll clean it up. Get some good good points to my name. So I went in there to clean it up. When I went in there, I was only propping the door open with my foot. My foot slipped off. <laughs> and just all came crashing down and that was the end of it. Yeah, North Tower to Chapo, pack up. Yeah, Probably not going to believe this one, but I'm semi-stuck in the tower, right? Eh? The door and the roof just shut on me and I, I can't get out. <laughs> so yeah, when I radioed in, there was about 10 seconds of silence going, what? Like, no one could really understand, and then it was just pure laughter. Really? <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's pretty heavy. I'm, I'm stuck. The door's not opening, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Oh. You think you've seen everything? Uh, Trainees, they always come up with something new, don't they? Yeah, unfortunately, Hoppo was on. Hoppo was in the tower. So he watched the whole event unfold. Not only is Jethro stuck, but none of his brothers in blue are rushing to the rescue. They were just waiting. No one's helping me. We don't think we're just going to leave him there till tomorrow morning when we open it up. Oh, rescue! I got stuck. What are you doing there, bro? I got stuck. Are you serious? <laughs> you couldn't get out? Reddy didn't even know I was in there. Reddy just came by and found me in there. So thank God Reddy was around. He's finally managed to fly the coop, but now Jethro has to face his boss, Hoppo. Have you got an explanation on how it actually yeah, happened? using my back foot to hold it open. And I leaned in a little bit too far, my foot slipped, and it all just shut. It's <laughs> <laughs> been a long afternoon, but that's just made my day. Several swimmers are struggling. There's one, two, there's like heaps. <laughs> hey, hey, just a yeah. south corner, Bondi. KC was already paddling out and I scanned out into the water and I saw a number of heads in the water going under and that's when it started to get really real. As Singlas heads in, a volunteer lifesaver reaches one patient. KC heads for a second patient kept afloat by a swimmer. Went to the worst patient who was probably the furthest out. He was pretty exhausted, pretty distressed. Pretty worn out from fighting the rip. Singlets heads for the volunteer lifesaver, who now has two on board. An inflatable rescue boat, or IRB, arrives to assist. offload my patient to the IOB a lot quicker than what I can paddling my patient back to the beach and then paddling back out. And at the same time, I can stay out there and see all my patients as well. As KC offloads one patient, Singlets struggles with his. When I picked up my patient, he was so exhausted that he couldn't even really hold on properly. I'm wrestling with the patient, trying to get him safe on my board. And a wave came, and the whole scenario started to get really scary really quickly. 
Singlet grapples with his patient as Wally heads for a fourth swimmer in trouble. There was one guy close to shore that I was keeping an eye on while all the, the commotion was going on out the back. I went in and just made sure that patient got in pretty quick. KC is now free to collect the last swimmer. With the rip running hard, he decides on a radical option to get his patient to safety. Normally, the rocks mean danger, but today, it's the safest option. It saves a lot of time to offload my patient there, and then I'm free again. So if another patient popped up, I could go assist them instead of trying to get that patient back to the beach. <laughs> All four rescue victims are Korean students. The rescue may be over. Yeah, thank you. But the drama is not. Is everyone accounted for? Is there, were there three or four? Four, four, four. 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 Where's number four? Someone says, where's the fourth patient? We're looking for a fourth. The patients are saying four, four. Where's number four? And everyone's just looking around and four. we're starting to panic. Only KC knows that his patient is safe and sound and still walking back around the rocks. It's the worst case scenario. There were four patients, now there are three on the beach. Has someone drowned? As KC cruises back to the beach, his patient clambers back along the rocks. Where were you sitting? Is he over where you're sitting? Where is your clothes, your belongings? Oh, no, no clothes. KC is blissfully unaware of the confusion and Singlet's growing panic. If he came into the beach, yeah. would he go and sit somewhere or have you got any belongings with you? Like, the lifeguards think that he came in, OK. Oh, water, water. Uh, yeah, water, but he came out of the water. Okay. Oh. Hey, 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 where's your fourth friend? The missing person at the end of that whole rescue is probably the most stressful part. Yeah. It seems to be your swimmer missing. Don't say that. There was four of them that went in the water. Uh, maybe he came yeah. off. Finally, the penny drops. I put him up on the rocks. Huh? I put him up on the rock. You did? Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Well, we go. 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 There you go. You know, and all of a sudden, this, like, anxiety spike comes down. There you go. Let's put him up the rock. There he is. So I was had to climb up the rocks to get away from the seal. This man has been spearfishing behind the point at North Bondi. He just wants to go home, the poor boat. His catch has been pilfered by a cheeky seal. I was a little bit worried at the start, but when I was looking through the binoculars, you could see he was safe because he got up onto the rock. Look at him, he's just standing on that one rock. <laughs> he's looking at his floaty, his floaty's just off to the right. The catch of fish is attached to a line on the man's spear gun, which has also been procured by the seal. It's a full on scene out there. The seal's like, nah, mate. Fortunately, the volunteer lifesaver jet ski happens to be nearby. One of the lifeguards to the support ski. There's a diver on the rocks who's um, just had a run with a seal. Oh, no, the club, he's on route. I think the diver's told him to go out and get his stuff. He's probably got fish on it. That's why he wants it back. He's got the spear gun. Oh. But he's not going to be able to get that close to the rock. The jet ski keeps its distance from the rocks, but that poses a problem for the spear fisherman. Look, he doesn't want to get off Mate, the rock. Get in the water. <laughs> get in the water. He's that scared. He won't even go from the three metres to the jet. The sea will chase him up the rocks. I'd be scared too. Go, mate. Get in there. Do it. Marooned on a rock, there's only one way back to safety. Everyone's running out to the boat ramp to have a look. Get in there, mate. 
29-year-old Mesalame is originally from Fiji. It's only the second time he's been spearfishing. I got into one suck, but when I when I come uh, when it uh, pop up, then I saw the seal. Then I tried to then I was going shoo 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 shoo. He was a lovely bloke. Never seen a seal before in his life. <laughs> I don't know, hopefully it hasn't, it hasn't ruined his perspective on seals, because they're generally friendly creatures. Yeah, I'm so scared now for seals. And those two, they're up there drinking something. Some white spirit. Emma, you got someone to pick you up? Yeah, I'm probably going to take his boyfriend. Can I talk to him? Yeah, there we are. Hey, hey, mate, how are you? It's Andrew. I'm one of the lifeguards down here at Bondi. Are you right to come and pick the girls up? I'm already on my way. I'm 40 minutes away. OK, mate. Thank you. Yeah. He doesn't sound happy. Oh, no, baby. Get out. Get out, baby. No, no, he's 40 minutes away, so... <laughs> it's all right. Baby, get some of that water into you. Huh? Water. Can I have a hug? I'll... No, I can't give you a hug. How are we feeling? Yeah, yeah, all right. Can I take Rip. a selfie of your boys? Yeah? Yeah, I'll... Hey, where's the guy picking you up? No, babe. You're my boyfriend. I'm your boyfriend? Yeah. No, I'm not your boyfriend. You're my... I want your mate. I... You're, You're gorgeous, mate. You're gorgeous. <laughs> he is gorgeous, isn't he? He is. He's very attractive, yeah. man. Hey, look, anyone's probably gorgeous behind those inebriated eyes, so um, I'd, I'll take that as a compliment, I think. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How's it going? Is he coming? Is he close? I don't know. Thank you. No worries. 20 minutes later, and their ride home is yet to arrive. Reedy and Corey monitor one of the women walking off alone. I was telling them to get split up. Yeah. Yeah, we were worried that, that one of the girls was walking off. Once someone's out of sight, you just don't know where they've gone. And if they're that drunk, they may not find each other again. Our main concern was that, that the girls don't get taken advantage of. I've still got stuff down there. Yeah, they're shoes. There's no way there's shoes in her bag. Do you want to go down to her? I might go get this stuff. We've got to make sure something and someone is going to come and help these girls. While Reedy gathers the women's belongings, Corey tries to keep track of the pair, also talking to the boyfriend who's just arrived to pick them up. Just go behind the lifeguard tower on the road, please. Yeah, too easy, too easy. I've got to do another lap. Yeah, OK, mate. One of the women is spotted inside the public bathroom. He's meeting, us, he's meeting us on the road. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Getting two drunken people to go into a car. He's nightmare. It was like rounding up wayward sheep. It was just a, it was a nightmare. One of the boyfriend was pretty frustrated because he'd been circling around for about half an hour trying to find where they are. One phone's dead. And the other one was just crazy going off, like, on the drink. <laughs> please get in the car. <laughs> just please get in the car. You'll be right. You'll be right. Just please get in the car. Finally, the women's lift home has arrived. It's not really a, a part of our job description, caring for people that are in that state of vulnerability. But who doesn't want to help someone get home safely? Hey, hey, just stand, mate. Stand, relax, and walk. Yeah, so I'd just seen a swimmer waving his hand in the air while he was standing in chest deep water. So it was all a bit confusing to me. Use your legs, not your arms. For unknown reasons, the man continues signalling for help. That would be my first where the person is actually standing up and I'm taking the kid off and I'm going to get them while they're standing. It's quite an embarrassing feeling, but you got to do what you got to do. After an awkward disembark. Oh, Bob, go, you're standing up, mate. You're standing up. Calvin from Malaysia can finally reveal what the problem was. So I lost my blood. It's all good. No, I mean, I lost my blood. All good, brother. Let's lie down. Lie down. And he was making some weird sort of pointing, like some pointing with his fingers to his eyes. I was trying to work out what was going on. Hey, just come with me. No, I don't panic. That's OK. It's all good. When you, when you panic, it makes it harder for yourself. So it's a deep breath, and you could actually stand up where you were, um, where I got you. 
Unable to see without his glasses, Calvin couldn't tell how far he was from shore. You're back, mate. You're back to land. When I go, when I'll go there, and then the wave comes to me like my glasses. Poof. I think it was when we actually got in that I realised that Calvin was nearly blind. Uh, he like Aquaman. <laughs> They must be some really powerful glasses, because without those, I certainly don't look like Aquaman. Aquaman's got a hectic beard. I don't have a beard at all. And he's got a mad rig on him, and I had a big Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Poor bloke didn't know which way was up or where he was going. No, That's I it. can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a tricky day. There was a deep channel of water, and then a big swell just rushing straight onto the shore and, and creating this quite a big, uh, powerful shore break. Beyond the shore break, a man is caught in backpacker's rib. You know, all throughout the day, I'd seen people getting sort of swallowed up by this thing, and I just thought, oh, you know what? If I have to do a rescue, I, I think I'm going to opt for the tube. Rarely used today, the tube was once the main piece of rescue equipment for lifeguards. You know, I just have a natural affinity with paddling the board. I love it. For this day, for me to opt for the tube is sort of saying something about that shore break. Singlet's choice of equipment is attracting attention from his colleagues. I reckon that's what you're going to all day. For sure, he is hectic. Even though the uh, shore break was quite heavy, I still would have went the board because you're going to float out pretty far with that tube. Yeah, I was running into the water and I got to sort of waist depth and I saw this huge shorey coming and I thought, oh, no. Despite a violent pummeling, Singlets isn't regretting his decision. You know, I came up and I thought, gee, I'm glad I've got this tube behind me. Like, trying to do that with a rescue board would have been a nightmare. So I thought, I've actually made the right decision here. I suppose getting through that shorey on the board, he could have, you know, got hit back once and that, that timing would have, been, would have been put back a bit. When I swam out to the patient, he was very tired and a little bit disorientated as well. He didn't really know how he'd got out so far or where he was. He probably wasn't used to seeing a lifeguard with a tube either. Singlets loops the tube around the man, clipping it shut so he doesn't lose hold of him. Oh, long to me. He must now swim himself and the man back through the shore break. Dead way, the guy's like standing up, like vertical. The swim in was an absolute nightmare. Like, now I know why we don't use tubes often. Yeah, you know, tube rescues are up there with one of the hardest things to do. You've got a tube attached to the patient and you're dragging that body weight back to shore. Just drag like a log. <laughs> we know that all the boys are watching and there's always a running commentary and I thought, oh, we can't get in and we're stuck in this rip, this is not going to go down well at all. They might go over the shore in No, no you know, Singlets did a great job being able to put that person on the tube and bring them back in through backpackers. It all ended out pretty well in the end, but you had one pretty exhausted lifeguard. It was late in the afternoon. We noticed uh, a girl in the, in the rift in the north corner struggling to get back in. I paddle out. She's a long way out. You OK? You OK? There you go. We're going to jump on, lie down like a surfboard, OK? <laughs> You all right? Yes. Gonna jump up, lie down like a surfboard. Come on. Ah. Bring your legs around to me. <laughs> ah. <laughs> come here, you gotta come here. <laughs> That's just where everything went downhill pretty quickly. You gonna face that way? And I noticed uh, I'm not in for uh, I'm not in for an easy one here. Jump up. <laughs> Come here, give me your arm, give me your arm. We're going to be out in New Zealand soon. They just keep drifting further out. Come on. I thought, all right, there's only one option for this. Lifeguards have a technique that we use for unconscious patients. We roll the board upside down and we drag their hands on top of the board. Ready? Yeah. Then roll the board over, then hoping to get half of their torso on the board and we can spin them around, which worked. You're going to face it, bring your leg to me, OK? 
Bring your leg to me. <laughs> come on, bring, come on. We got I've got to go back to shore. Oh no. This technique didn't even work. Come here, you're gonna come here. Oh my god. You're gonna jump on, lie down like a surfboard, okay? At North Bondi, you've got the grassy knoll in the afternoon. It's like being at a theatre and everyone's watching you. You're on stage. What's going on there? That's weird. I know the boys are watching from the tower. Face that way. Who would have thought that the worst rescue in lifeguard history could get even worse? <laughs> I would hate to think how long I was in the water for. It's trying to get this girl in. It's, it's a nightmare. Oh, no, it fell off again. And we've still drifted further and further out, and I still haven't even got her on the rescue board. For me, being out in the water, that's time away from being on the radio, and if something else does happen, you know, we can't respond to that incident. This is drastic now. We need to go to the last resort. You know what you're going to do? Hold on to the back handle of the back. So the last resort is just... Hold on to the back handle. Hang on to the handles, and I'll somehow try and drag you in. And so she grabs the handles, and I start paddling. What? She just lets go straight away. Hold on. Stay holding on to the handles. I'm all right, mate. All right, don't try. Oh, just don't try and get up. Don't try and get up. Just hold on to the handles. Come here. I've done a lot of rescues. I reckon you're the worst one I've ever had. All right, just hold on there. Don't move. Don't move. Okay. Just don't move. This is by far the most embarrassing moment of my career. I think I might have invented a new technique and I'm going to have to give the hop a call because we need to redo the manual hop. Thank you, my friend. You OK? Yes, thank you. Here, Bola Bola, just go back to shore and don't yes. swim down here, OK? Thank you. Don't let your friend down there. <laughs> She's not a good swimmer. I've never been so excited to feel and touch dry land in the sand before in my life. <laughs> that was hands down the worst rescue I have ever done. Yeah, I'd rather not talk about that one. That was embarrassing on my behalf. 